What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we'll be doing another trade breakdown. And as you can see, it is the Hunter Pence trade. Uh, this is a trade that still haunts me today as a Phillies fan. We'll get to why in a little bit. Um, so I do want to put out that starting with this video in particular, I don't follow prospects outside of the top. I don't follow players outside of the top two teams. So in this original trade, it was Houston and Philadelphia. So you'll see later on in particular that I don't follow what happens to them after they get acquired by their secondary teams. So these are the two primary teams. Everyone else is a secondary team. I just want to put that out there just so you know in case you're, let's just say, a Tigers fan and I don't necessarily follow what happens with your team. That's what it is. And again, you'll see with the Tigers and the uh, the Pirates, I'll get to them in a little bit if a player that is acquired isn't thrown into that trade i do include the whole trade so war while it's the stat that i use the most to help it's not perfect i get that i know that and you know if you look at the war for this trade in particular houston dominates but again we'll get to that when we get to that but without further ado we're gonna jump right in and start with the original trade which happens on july 29th of 2011 in which the Houston Astros would acquire first baseman John Singleton, pitcher Josh Zeed, outfielder Domingo Santana, and starting pitcher Jared Cosart. Now, Domingo Santana was originally a player to be named later. He gets thrown in later in the trade. The Philadelphia Phillies, in return for that package of four prospects, would acquire outfielder Hunter Pence. So let's start with the Astros side of this trade. And as you can see, I have everything color-coded. So Houston's in blue. Philadelphia is in red. Any other team involved in this trade is going to be in black. And the wars are in green on the right-hand side of the player's name, as always. So, Houston. First baseman Josh Singleton. John Singleton. He was one of the better prospects in this trade. Um, he shows a lot of promise early on. But after two seasons, he, flare, he fails and he just falls out of the MLB because of a couple failed drug tests. So he really looked good, but failed drug tests really hurt him. He was a power bat, obviously a first baseman. So, yeah. Um, Josh Zeed, similar. You know, he spent two years on the Major League roster, but for the most part, he was bouncing between MLB and AAA, and uh, he never really developed before getting waived. So, again... Kind of a wash with the first two picks. As you can tell, they both had below average careers on the Astros roster. Domingo Santana. Now, we all know who Domingo Santana is at this point if you're watching this video. And really, he didn't get that much of an opportunity in Houston. Um, he would struggle with high strikeout numbers and limited plate appearances before being traded. Where does he get traded? Well, right below here, you can see Houston acquires starting pitcher Max Fears and outfielder Carlos Gomez from Milwaukee in exchange for outfielder Domingo Santana, of course, relief pitcher Josh Hader, outfielder Brent Phillips, and pitcher Adrian Hauser. So, we'll get back to Cozart. I follow these trades as we go. I, I'm kind of trying to break down how I'm doing these videos, so this video will be a little longer. But, so, Fires in particular, you know... We all know him as the guy who broke the cheating scandal wide open. He's the one who admitted it. He's the one who got the whole investigation going. So, yeah, Houston probably wish I didn't do this trade. But he spent two and a half years in base in Houston. Uh, he threw a no-hitter in 2015, actually, shortly after this trade. And, of course, he would leave the team following the 2017 World Series. But he, he was slightly above average. Carlos Gomez, he was actually the bigger name in this trade. He just... He, he did well in 2015, you know, in for the half season, and he was bad. I mean, bad in 2016, which led to him being just DFA'd, and nobody even tried to trade for him. And Carlos Gomez actually had a bright career, so he had a good career, but sometimes things happen. Now, how did Milwaukee do in this trade in particular? Well, uh, Domingo Santana, you know, he spent three and a half years in Milwaukee, and he did miss most of the 2016 season due to injury, but um, he would actually do well 
and he gets traded after the 2018 season. So again, I don't follow that trade. This is one thing I wanted an example for. So I don't, we don't want to do that. I don't have enough room on the whiteboard and then the videos become way too long. But Josh Hader. So we all know Josh Hader. He's really developed into an, I, I wrote elite, I would say above average, great closer um, since he debuted for Milwaukee in 2017. So he's an interesting name. You know, he is a closer, but he's not a closer. They put him out to close a lot, but that's also because Corey Nibble was out for the past year and a half. Now that he's back, who knows what's going to happen. Um, Hader's still a great option, but he's one of those guys who could go out there and get you a six-out save, which doesn't happen that much anymore. Uh, Brett Phillips. So he spent most of his time in the minors before being traded in 2018. But when he played in the majors, he was decent. Nothing great. And then Adrian Hauser, um, he's been on the team since 2018, and he started off just kind of as a pitcher. They kind of told him, hey, man, we want you to start. He started, and he also was a reliever. As of this moment, he is a starter in their rotation, but we'll see what happens. Um, So, yeah, that is the first part of the trade. That's what Domingo Santana netted them, so nothing great. And then last but not least, in the original Hunter Pence trade, we get the Astros acquiring starting pitcher Jared Cosart. Now, in Houston, Cosart actually had a solid year. He did pretty well, and as evidenced by his, you know, above average war of 2.9 in a single season. But what he ends up doing is he ends up being very critical of Houston management, which pissed them off and led led him to being traded. So he gets bundled in a trade to Miami. So Miami in that trade would acquire Jared Cozart, utility man Enrique, or as we know him now, Kiki, Kike Hernandez, and outfielder Austin Watts. In return, the Astros would acquire outfielder Jake Marisnik, Marisnik third baseman Colin Moran, pitcher Francis Mar- Martez, and a compensatory pick in the 2015 draft, which would become outfielder Daz Cameron. Oh, Daz Cameron. Um, so we'll start with the Marlins side of this trade. Just get them out of the way. Kozar, he spends parts two years in Miami before getting traded in 2016. He, uh, he was, he didn't do as well as he did in the single season Houston, but he wasn't a disappointment. I mean, it's Miami. They're in a perpetual rebuild. It seems until right now. Uh, he, he was a solid piece. Enrique Hernandez. So he barely plays for the Marlins before being traded to the Dodgers. Uh, kind of a bad trade for the De- for the Marlins, but, you know, he was just a utility player. And then Austin Watts, he never makes the MLB, so he's kind of just a wash. So for Houston, uh, we'll start off with Marasnik. So he does decent. Um, he serves as a fourth outfielder for Houston for from mid-2014 when he gets called up until 2019. So he was on their championship team. Um, as you can see, he had a good war of 10.7. He actually got traded to the New York Mets during the 2019 offseason. I didn't include that trade too, too much. Normally, I would have, but I'm not really discussing anything in 2020 at this moment. It's too early in the season, and yeah, it's just way too early to do that. Um, as for Colin Moran, well, Colin Moran leads us to this side of the board. But in Houston, Colin Moran wasn't spectacular. Uh, you know, he more bounced through double A AA and triple A, triple uh, A in the majors, but he would, you know, eventually start to play a little bit more. But by the time he did, you know, he, he became trade bait and he gets included in the Garrett Cole trade. So this trade is Houston acquiring starting pitcher Garrett Cole, as we all know. From Pittsburgh, in exchange for third baseman Kyle Moran, starting pitcher Joe Musgrove, relief pitcher Michael Feliz, and outfielder Jason Martin. So we all know Garrett Cole, of course. He had two elite years in Houston as an ace before walking in free agency, signing with the Yankees. Pittsburgh, on the other hand of this trade, you know, they uh, they got Moran, who's a decent first third baseman, nothing great, just serviceable. Joe Musgrove has actually been a decent starter for them for the two, past two seasons. Uh, he's by far the best player in this trade for he, Pittsburgh, which is kind of sad. You know, he's nothing great. Um, Michael Feliz has been an okay bullpen player. 
and Jason Martin has not seen that much time in the majors. So yeah, that's how that trade worked out. Not the best for Pittsburgh. Now we'll come back to this side of the board, and Frank Francis uh, Martez, so he really um, just spends part of 2017 in the majors, but he uh, he's kind of struggled since then. He had to undergo Tommy John surgery, and he's had a couple drug suspensions. He's currently suspended, actually, by Major League Baseball, so not the best player to acquire. And last but not least in this part of the trade, we have the compensatory pick in 2015, which I said became outfielder Daz Cameron. So Daz Cameron was actually projected to go higher. He was a potential top 20, and he was a high schooler. So when a high school prospect falls outside of like the top 20 when they're projected to go, a lot of teams are scared of him because they're like, okay, he's not going to sign unless we overpay, overpay, overpay. And the Astros said, you know what? We had a high pick this year. We have all these bonus money. Let's go, let's take a chance on Cameron. So they took him. They signed him. And he never makes it to the majors for them because, you know, he was a high school player, like I said. And those guys don't take don't fly straight from, you know, high school to Major League Baseball. It doesn't happen. So he gets included in the Justin Verlander trade. So in the Verlander trade, the Astros would acquire starting pitcher Justin Verlander, of course, who dominated. So Verlander just has a dominant ace-like few years in Houston. He's out for the year in 2020, unfortunately, but he's been so good. He was an instrumental piece in them winning the World Series in 2017. In return, Detroit got three prospects. Now, Daz Cameron and Franklin Perez, our outfielder Daz Cameron, pitcher Franklin Perez, catcher Jake Rogers. Cameron and Perez are both still in the minors. They're both still, you know, respected prospects at this point. And Jake Rogers, um, he made his debut in 2019. And he struggled offensively, but he's more known as a defensive catcher anyway. So maybe he can rebound. But again, the war for him, I'm not, I wouldn't be worried if I'm a Detroit fan, you know, as a prospect at this point. But let's jump back. So that's how Houston did with this whole group. How did Philadelphia do with Hunter Pence? Well, Pence spent one full season in Philly, half the season in 2011 and half the season in 2012. And he was good. But unfortunately for Hunter Pence, and the Phillies. The team just fell off a cliff for 2012. You know, their championship window was over. Ryan Howard was out, and uh, the, the core was getting old, so they weren't the same thing. So they end up flipping him to San Francisco. So San Francisco, of course, gets Hunter Pence, and Hunter Pence for San Francisco, <clears throat> he proved to be a key piece in their 2012 and 2014 World Series runs. He was a great leader on and off the field for the team. And he would actually make one all-star game for the Giants. And he'd hung around the team through the 2018 season. And he actually did return to them in 2020. So Hunter Pence has been a reliable piece. You know, he, he's hung around the team for a long time. He hasn't been elite. He's not what he was in Houston. But he's still been a very good bat. In return for Hunter Pence, the Phillies would acquire outfielder Nate Scheiserholtz catcher Tommy Joseph, and pitcher Seth Rosen. So, huh, Shireholtz, he, he, he played well in limited playing time in uh, the half season in 2012, but he ends up walking in free agency because the team wasn't committed to him as a future piece, so they're like, okay, goodbye. I'm going to skip Joseph for a second. So Seth Rosen, uh, he, he ends up getting picked from the team in the 2013 Rule 5 draft, and then he ends up getting returned because he wasn't ready for baseball. He wasn't ready for the MLB. And he ends up playing for the Phillies in 2015 when the team was awful. And he didn't do that good. So he ends up leaving, and that's it for him. Now, Tommy Joseph was the big name in this trade. Tommy Joseph was gonna was supposed to be, you know, this big-name catcher. But he ends up suffering concussions. And due to concussions as a catcher, they end up moving him to first base. And he still struggles and he spends two years in the Phillies organization, but he ends up getting designated for the assignment after the 2017 season as the team had, you know, acquired Carlos Santana in free agency. So they didn't need Tommy Joseph anymore to play first base. They already had two first basemen, Reese Hoskins and Carlos Santana, and they just end up cutting him. Uh, he's kind of bounced around since then, but it's a shame, you know, 
So this was the Hunter Pence trade. Again, as a Phillies fan, it hurts me to look at this trade. Uh, if you go by war, again, Houston slaughters this trade with a 39.4 collective war from all of these players. But a huge portion of that comes from Verlander and Cole, of which they basically included a decent third baseman and a young prospect outfielder who still has a lot of potential. If you take those two trades away, though, they still come out in a good position. Um, they, they still have one of the top wars. They still have the best war in this, tra in this trade. So, or the second best war in this trade. So, um, again, the Phillies had a war of 2.3. Not that great. Uh, the Giants got a war of 10.5 solely out of Hunter Pence. Milwaukee got a war of 13.6. Mostly every single person in that trade that they got has had a solid career for the Mar for the uh, Brewers at this point. Hater, of course, counts for about half of that. Uh, the Marlins themselves got a 1.8 war specifically from Jared Cosart. The Tigers have a negative 0.5 war. Again, if you're a Tigers fan, don't worry about that. It's meaningless at this point. And the Pirates have a 2.1 war out of there, guys. Unfortunately for them, that war is not really likely to change all that much. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this was the Hunter Pence video, or Hunter Pence trade breakdown. The original trade was July 29th of 2011. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.